So Yannick's my dude. What's up, man? What's going on? Shit, nothing much. I just mixed the sour Skittles with the regular. Shit. As long as it got the name Skittles on it, you winning. This is delicious. Delicious. That's a combo. Mad one there. You can wait out for you. There you go. There it is. All right. So uh, welcome to the recipe podcast where the game is sold, not told. It's your boy BQ. And we're in the Welcome studio. Welcome to the story. Welcome to the store slash studio slash orange room slash the back of lifted barbershop. Everybody know. Now you know. Um, I'm with my dog Yonix right here. Yonix Jones. <laughs> San Jose famous street king. For the motherfuckers that don't know, mm. go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are. What's up? Big, <clears throat> big bad papa motherfucking yeah. tank shit. <laughs> so... My guru right here, if you guys follow his Instagram and social media, he's really out and about, really documenting his content on a level where people know what the fuck's going on behind the scenes, people that are a fan of his music, a fan of his business model, keep up with your stuff, um, and the reason why I'm generally speaking like this is because I have all types of people that are going to they're gonna ask me, like, why the fuck are you interviewing this dude? <laughs> like, why the fuck is this guy here on the podcast? You got to Google it, dumb dumb. Google it. Search it, but the game is going to be sold today. Um, so, recent news mm-hmm. from what I've been keeping up with. Mm-hmm. Um, well, first off, congratulations on your new drop. I know you just dropped some new music. Thank you. Tell the people a little bit about the, the music you just dropped. Got a new song with Splash Kales. A long-awaited collab. Niggas been waiting like over five years for this shit. Yeah, it's called Ferdinand, like the bull. So what's the Ferdinand? It's the, it's the famous bull. The famous bull, bull, yeah, like um, like in the children's story, or um, I guess in Spain there's like a real bull named Ferdinand that's hella okay. famous. So it's like a Spanish term. Yeah, I might be slipping. It's the that. bull, I'm fucking slipping right now. I don't even know who that is. I speak Spanish. El Toro. <laughs> so another thing, recent news is that you bought a piece of uh, a vehicle, yeah. transportation. I was gonna say land. I was gonna say land too, but I'll be moving land. I'll be lines of the people, but like. So uh, for your for your for your business, yeah, you incorporated that. Yeah, we bought a truck, a big ass box truck, made a mobile store. So what what inspired you to do a mobile sp- mobile store? Because uh, paying rent in San Jose is expensive as fuck. That is accurately so. accurate, as I can tell you off camera. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. San Jose rent is expensive as fuck. Silicon Valley, for the ones that are gentrifying our culture, know best. Yeah, the non tax paying techies. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff Bezos, motherfucker. Yeah, um, so, <laughs> so tell tell uh, tell people a little bit more, like in the depths of like, because for me, I see you as an entrepreneur. That's someone that is an innovator, someone that thought about a mobile store. Because someone's gonna see it as a truck, yeah. but you branded it as a mobile store. Yeah. So that's that's creativity. Yeah. Like for the ones that are kind of like having a hard time comprehending, creativity, innovation at its finest. So like, why was it important for you to be able to distribute, but also deliver in a way? Or you're not at one location. You're like, I'm on the east. I'm on the south. I'm so on I the west. Trapping, trapping everywhere. We got run it, run it up. So you thread trapping, you exotic snack trapping, Everything. you CD trapping, whatever, all whatever types of clever. trapping. So for the for the like I said, I'm, I'm you know what? I'm just gonna go. I'm, when I generalize some shit, I'm just gonna say to you gentrifiers. So to you gentrifiers, when I mean trapping, we're talking about business. We talk about Working flipping. Hard. We talking about hustling. You know what I'm saying? Entrepreneurship. And that's real. That's a real subject because there's a lot of people our age. You know, we millennials. At the end of the day, that's what we are branded as a society. But yeah. I feel like um, people don't realize entrepreneurship comes in multiple forms, multiple multiple different uh, demographics, cultures. Right. Um, so why is it important for you to to create your own income? Because they be playing, man. I can't even get a job at Target. <laughs> Fuck Target, man. I, oh, nah, I take that back. Target is a good spot. Nah, everybody Target. goes to Target for damn near everything. Not if they're not hiring niggas. That's true. they definitely not hiring everybody because everybody man. nowadays picky and they choosing. So uh, why was it important for you to, like I said, like why was it important though like to make your own income? Like, yeah, Target ain't hiring motherfuckers, <clears throat> but like, why was it important for you to create your own dollars and your own revenue? Shit, cause I never had shit. Nobody want to give me nothing, so you just gotta do it. You know, you gotta just do it. You can't get a job. You gotta employ yourself, like the tamale lady. Hell yeah, tamale lady is a good example, cause yeah, she the one. Latina ladies, you know, they out there putting in that work. Yeah, putting in dude. more work than some men out here, believe it or not. Right, I'm putting in some real work. So like, 
a mobile truck like how did you how did you get access to that where did you go you know what i'm saying like how can someone get in a position to like invest into some their own property like that because that's a oh, big you gotta move. worry you got look don't nobody want to hang out in a parking lot but you got to do it and if you don't then that's why you're broke so you got to just do what you don't want to do and you're gonna get it you got to work you got to sacrifice so what was one of the things that you didn't want to do that was a part of that formula trap all day in the rain <laughs> you know the rainy ass cold ass days man i'm outside thugging so that's how i got a truck and when it's hot outside, when it's like 107, I'm outside, thugging. And, and the, cra- <laughs> the crazy part is, because it's not only just being in that situation where you're under the rain or you're in the hot-ass weather. And people from the Bay Area know that it's a fucking mix. It's a, it's a, it's a fucking bipolar-ass weather situation. It'll be stupid hot or it'll be fucking ridiculous cold. Right. But what stands out about you is that you have that kind of like that lion instinct like you're just gonna go out there and get it you're not gonna wait for someone to hand it to you yeah because they're not gonna give it to me so like one of the stories that i remember <laughs> you know what i'm saying one of the story i always tell the story for everybody that like you know comes across the same situation with me yannick's in the same room is i was out south gate you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? i was on the south everybody knows from the south side there's that traditional area everybody be buying all their stuff um i was walking to the i was walking to south gate and homie's like, hey, yo, hey, let me holler at you real quick, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, all right, let me let me go inside real quick. you know. And that happens every now and then. Someone's trying to holler at you. But sometimes, you know, let's be real. Some people don't give you that time of the day. Or they kind of just like gave you that two seconds. The elevator pitch is what they call right? Yeah. So I come back out with my, my ham 2 and my and my Doritos. Tapatio, everybody knows me when I get when I'm getting my munchies. Um, I come out. And he's all like, hey, let me holler at you real quick. And then you pull out your CDs. And then you start just going. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, he was going, flowing. He talking about me. I'm, th- I'm, I'm talking about, about this, the real. Else. I'm talking about the real. I'm talking about you right now. This is, this is a real story. I'm telling people a story about you because this is how I met you. Okay. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And this is like, what, 2000? I want to say late 17, early 18. Yeah. We, talk, we, t- we 2019. We're six months away yeah. from 2020. So yeah, the beginning. You, you've come a long way. You know what I'm saying? From, you know, flipping out of the trunk, whether it's not even your trunk, whether it's your homie's block or right here in the liquor store. The point I'm making is that it starts with shit like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The attitude you have. Yeah. Fuck the rain. Fuck the heat. You go hustle. Right. So, like, how do you maintain that mentality and that mindset even when you're not really cooking the way you want to cook? Because you know how, like, um, you know when you're, like, trying to call in sick for work, but the manager ain't trying to hear it? Yep. It's like, bro, shut up. Get your ass to work, nigga. <laughs> you, but you, you ain't had no Pepto-Bismol yet. Try some Pepto-Bismol. Get over here, you know? <laughs> you talk about, like, in the perspective of a manager. Yeah. Yeah, I know how that feels. Yeah, I used to manage you, a sprint store, so I used you know? to deal with that shit all the time. Right, so, you know, like, I, I remember I, when I hated my job and shit, I used to try to come up with crazy-ass excuses, <laughs> and they'd look me dead in the face, like, look, man, like, one time he pulled me to the side, like, look, you know, like, fucking, this is a machine, bro, and, like, it don't matter about nothing, like, it don't matter about what I'm going through, I gotta show up to open the door for y'all, and do this and that, whatever, whatever, and everybody got their little part they gotta do, and if not, we just gonna switch them out, mm-hmm. cause we gotta run the shit, and I was like, that's how you gotta be on yourself, If you, you gotta, you gotta be on your own head tougher than anybody else if you want this shit, so... That's a that's a real deep thing right there. And that that is right there going to be the highlight of all this right here. Because I feel like a lot of people don't, like how you said, they don't check yeah. themselves. Right. And I think that's the realest shit you, you got to do. You got to beat your own ass. Sometimes it, it might, from a third perspective, someone that like, like let's see you walk in the room, you all talking to yourself like, fuck, bro, you need to get your shit together. Like, you better. up to your own you shit. get it together. But that's the real move. shit right there. That's the real step for you actually leveling up. You know, you got to own up. Be like, I'm not really hustling like I'm tweeting. I'm not really like inspiring like on my t- my posts on Instagram. You know right. what I'm saying? You really remind yourself like you really got to get in the back and you got to do whatever it takes like be in the rain, be in the sun. Yeah. All that and, shit. And you got to look at it like if you got if you if you working at McDonald's like them 8 hours you applying yourself for them 8 hours tough and when it's slow they going to find something for you to do. Mm-hmm. And it, it you know you got one position but they are going to have you doing everything possible, you know. And all that so so like what do you feel like like for some people that don't don't inherit that mentality and they out there still trying to create a business like what's your advice to them you know what i'm saying because i know we know a lot of people I'm just, not, die. just die just <laughs> die just, just fucking leave man just, you just, a fucking waste look, the air like you, you said they what they had they just got some money 
they get maybe they got money they got just clout, just give it people, to me they use influence versus like their their like business you know what i'm saying like look if you ain't got no hustle just give it to me i'll take it i'll take all of it <laughs> give me all them chips you don't you don't need it i'll just take i'll look i'll get you a nice little house in the corner of the property and you'll be fine so just give me all of it <laughs> another thing i want to ask you because like I, I really appreciate your mentality right yeah and i think it's important that we document at the end of the day all jokes aside like it's really good that we document this yeah. because people like that come from a situation that maybe they don't really see any any possibilities arise like you really have the mentality even through that the gutter so like what was like one of the the most difficult challenges that you went through like to the point where like it brought tears to your eyes like maybe you didn't drop no g tears but i'm saying like it was so serious that you 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 didn't know what to think. It was overwhelming. Shit, sleeping outside is fucking. It's cold, man. Sleeping outside at a bus stop and your mom don't want to fucking your mom change the locks on you. <laughs> you know, you gotta realize like shit, nigga. I gotta do something tomorrow. I can't just be hanging out with these cat ass niggas because they go home. Everybody go home except for you. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta do something. That's real, cause like some people don't even understand that struggle, you know. Yeah. They'll be with you in the midst of the fun and all that, but when yeah, they like, home, oh, bro, it's late. I'm out. See ya. Dude, I'm gonna go sleep in my bed. Yeah, I'm going to my mama's house. So at so, that point, you just stuck. Real shit. So you feel like that was what embedded that that mind frame that you lead with now? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, that and like just you know, growing up and struggling, growing up, watching my mom struggle and work hella hard all that but for myself i would say yeah like that young adult years is having to really 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 struggle i really struggle and figure it out so how old were you when those young adult years were like the most emphasis on your struggling as soon as you legally <laughs> on your own hell yeah man like 18 19 20 first second of 18 years old <laughs> Point mill- milliseconds. Um, we was waiting. The moment the the what twelve oh one p.m. <laughs> man, yeah. Oh man. So like, you know, all, all, throughout all that, right? Through all the midst of the hard work, now actually having your own property, having mm. you know, having your own inventory, your merchandise. You got distribution. You got services. You got hella shit. You got your foot tangible in every door. But like, how? What is your satisfaction throughout all this? Like, what is um. Like, at the end of the day, how much do you need to have in order to be happy? Like, what I'm saying is, like, obviously, we all typically want millions. Everybody wants the nice cars, the nice I'll, I'll everything. I look at it two different ways. Emotionally, I don't need nothing. I got my kids. I got my family. I got my wife. I, I be talking about fucking just buying a little island somewhere and just dipping on everybody. Yeah, cause still the same story. I remember that one. Because, nigga, I don't need to pay no bills. Fuck this shit. Fuck the light bill. Facts. All that shit's retarded. But... If we in this game, this shit, pff, I need it all. Run it. Run it because it's a different playing field. So I agree. That's all it is. So you still have an end, a visionary goal. Mm. But throughout that, you're happy with the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end goal, like, it's just to make sure everybody's straight. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, like, there's no real, like, like the whole, like, like, I don't know when money was created, but before it was, like, you know, like, the singer just sang to people, and they, like, then the baker would just give them bread, and, like, the chef would just cook, and, like, you know, the the farmer would just give the nigga a cow for singing, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. everything just worked, coexisting. it was an ecosystem, it was an ecosystem and then money popped in from the lazy guy, figured out how to finesse some shit, yeah. and now it's like a new game, so you just gotta play it, and it's, you know, sometimes it sucks. Cause no, I, I don't think there's really a reason for anybody needing to play it. But if you hear fuck, it's like, it's like you're born in the basketball court. Just play, like just go. What are you gonna do? That's what you do. Yeah, what do you do? It's a new, it's a new world. So new like new world order. So you got many, like I said earlier, you got multiple titles. Yeah. At least from what I'm branding you, or like what you would brand yourself. Like, what is one way? You could describe yourself to people that don't know you. The plug. The plug. That's the most simplest, but yet sold way to do it. The plug. Mm-hmm. So, where could people find you in San Jose? Because like this anywhere, is the thing, like you, we could find you anywhere. I know I can find you. I get you call. You know, just right scream. Away. Just be like Yonix. 
Tank shit. Yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> Louder. So is that always important for you to like at 408, at 408 p.m.? You got to like make sure you brand that shit. That's your thing. Nah. Nah. I just sometimes I get lucky and just look at the clock at the right time. You're like, oh shit, it's 408. Yeah, it's like <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 408. Fucking what's another good one? 11, 11, 11, 11, 1, 11. What's your favorite one to make sure you make it a point? 408. Hell yeah. <laughs> Thank it's you. gotta be. Everybody know, how do you feel about owning that title as tank shit? Because people are gonna say left and right that somebody said that tank shit from this person or like we started saying it back then or this person was doing it. Me personally, I'm gonna give you the props. I'm gonna say you created tank shit. And that's just me being 1000 because me coming from San Jose culture, me being born and raised here, I'm gonna keep it oh so 1000. I know where shit started from and maybe you weren't first person saying it verbally but you were the first person to brand it you know what i'm saying put that shit on the jacket make that shit be loud and proud you know what i'm saying make sure everybody hears that shit i, I like i like uh encouraging everybody to feel like they uh you know like they take part in some so most people when they be like man i started tank shit or shit like that it's like hell yeah nigga go ahead <laughs> yeah, you do did. that shit go ahead. for go sure ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I I never heard of you, you know, but whatever. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, and then I just feel like it just comes. It it's really it really comes down to who reps it the hardest and who who you put on with it or who who you introduce to it because that's what will make you starting some or doing some. Like if you was tank shit, if you was really tank shit, you know, it don't matter if I put you on with it. If you felt like you was some type of San Jose shit, then you would do it. And you would be telling people about it, and then they, all those people would feel like you started the shit now, they because mm. you put them onto it. Agreed. So there's no there's no real ownership. It's just, I as as far as right now, I just put the most niggas on. That's it. Period. So I'm just <laughs> waiting for more niggas to get to it. <laughs> yeah, bro. I feel like the way you've been branding it, you know, what I'm saying I've seen you create so many different types of merchandise with that logo <laughs> and that branding on it. Yeah, it's creative. You know, what I'm saying I feel like San Jose is growing as a as a as a title as a brand on its own like yeah. through all the other stuff with tech and all the other shit but like you know there's a community of urban culture that exists that people are gonna like people that are tourists coming to san jose they're gonna be like oh what's the urban culture look like right. what the hell is tank shit what is people referring to you know people call south central compton like they have their own branding right like oakland the town san francisco the city like san jose the tank that's still growing in the in the community but i feel like tank everyone shit. from san jose knows what's up when people refer to the tank They'd be like, you know, when I go to Oakland, I go to a store, I'm like, oh, where are you from? From San Jose, you know, the Tang. Like, I'd be repping. Like, at the end of the day, I'm going to be loud and proud about where I say it. But right. like I said, w going back to you, you branded it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, how does that make you feel, bro? Feel I feel good. like you should feel like, I feel I'm fucking good. branded that shit. It's not enough. <laughs> I feel like it ain't enough. I don't, I don't own not one neighborhood in San Jose yet. Shit, we all trying to get there, that's for sure. We need to own our community. I don't even own a house yet, man. This shit's expensive. It's real. So what do you think about that shit? Like I was just doing some research earlier today and I put I don't know if you seen my Instagram story, but I posted something that showed like the average US house and it go from like three hundred to four hundred thousand and you pay like twelve to ten percent down. That's like what, twenty G's? I almost bought a house last year in the South for five bands. You see what I'm saying? How big was the house? The one story, two story? Shit, who cares? It's a whole. It's a house. No, I that's facts. Land. I agree with you, but I'm saying like, what, how? I didn't even care. I just heard the price and he said, "Take it, give it to me. I'll run it." So you talking about South San Jose? Or you talking about like? No, no, South in Alabama. Yeah, like Bama, Easy. Louisiana. So like five thousand. Now, like, imagine like right now, like a growing economy would be like like uh, the Valley, Manteca, Tracy, mm -hmm. or even like Phoenix. It's like two hundred thousand. You get it for the low. Three hundred thousand. Yeah. You get it for the low, and then eventually, like like people that made bought San, bought a house in San Jose like ten years ago made stupid play. Man, I, I met this guy. I got a homie. His parents bought their house for eighteen bands back in the day. I'm trying to buy a piece of it. You feel me? <laughs> I got 50 for you. <laughs> let me That's get, the way let for me get sure. the front yard. I just feel like a lot of people our age still don't understand the basics of economy. No, like they, the basics they of dumb like, bums. So like what what's like what's what's like your opinion towards people not taking the time to I mean, I don't know. There's different subjects I want to bring up, but like specifically like the economy, like finances, yeah. like mm -hmm. financial literacy, like Cause obviously you have some financial literacy. If you over here making plays, buying pink slips, and doing all these certain things and whatnot, I don't know nothing. Hey, but that's the basics, though. Believe it or not, you might see it as nothing, but in my point of view, I see it's like you know more than a lot of other people that see, are older that still don't know shit, that still don't own shit. What it comes down to 
is okay. So it's like this. This is how I see it. You know how like Mowgli was abandoned in the jungle, right? So he learned how to be a jungle boy. Mm-hmm. No, like nobody, he wasn't taught nothing. He just. It's like how a baby learn how to walk. You just fall and you learn how to walk. Yeah. You know, you get dropped in the jungle. You learn how to be a jungle boy, sister. You know? Like, I didn't learn shit. You're just, just adapting to your environment. I'm just adapting. I'm, I'm surviving, you know? So now let's let's, <laughs> let's let's take it a little deeper just because I'm a deep guy. That's just how I roll. So, like, you adapt into your environment. Mm-hmm. We live in an environment where we live in the highest concentration of Silicon Valley and tech. Yeah. So how is someone like us growing up in a... Uh, you know, south part of San Jose or low economic area, whatever. How do we transition into that space? Shit, uh, get money, get money. <laughs> That's obviously the play. <laughs> it's so okay. So like, like for example, I got I know a lot of people who who don't like school, right? Yep. Everybody talk shit about school, but like all day, every day, all I think about is how I'm doing algebra. Hmm. That's it. So it's like I need, I want to make a thousand dollars today, right? Yep. How we gonna do it? We yeah. gotta figure it out. So I like it's that. a big ass math equation. It's and, it's real though. That's really like how people really make that money at the end of the day. Yeah, like, it's like a, those word problems in the textbooks that niggas be like, man, I ain't <laughs> trying to do that one. Like, bro, that's how he got rich. He, he Tom has six lemons and a one bottle of water, and he needed three bottles for the lemonade, and he said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna make a third of a cup and sell it." and Buy two bottles. You just gave some a free game. How to make some money right now? You know, <laughs> they don't even know how to do that. That's you don't what I'm even saying. need all the pieces. Sometimes you just just move fast. Move, make the make the math go fast, and you're not going. Because I feel like also the only thing that really holds you back is the life expenses. So like, if you can move faster than your life expenses, then you can make those types of plays that you wasn't supposed to be able to make. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Especially if you got like a support system. You know, you got someone helping you out with a roof, at least yeah. a bed. You, you know take saying? advantage of that. Yeah, because I gotta pay. All that, all that. Oh, business call. Hold on one second. Transactions in the making right now as we speak. All right, man. Wife's calling. I'm off the live. <laughs> Save that. Share it. Yes, all right, sir. Call her back real quick. Instant documentation. Instant promotion on the spot, man. That's why I fuck with this dude right here, man. Yeah, but where were we at though? Um, we was talking about economics, you know what I'm saying? Talking about the basics of math, of how you can yeah, make some more money. Yeah, it's just a big-ass math equation, really, in reality. That's about it. This shit ain't picking up. Cool, we off. So, like, so for me, like, I have multiple angles on certain things. You know, for me, the reason why I call it the recipe podcast is everybody has a certain ingredient that makes elements of their actual solution to their formula. Yeah. So, like, you know, the main thing that I really impressed me about you, like I said, was the entrepreneurship, was your ability to create content and do it quick as fuck and to do it so drastically where you have so much that you gonna, i'm gonna miss some shit right and i'm gonna I take the time i'm to look missing for it. shit like the one like i was mentioning <laughs> elvis earlier the fucking famous elvis everybody knows about from san jose yeah. and i was talking to my coworker about it. i was like i know i seen it on yannick's page bro. let me go right back i'm going through it but i'm catching myself going through all your shit you know what i'm saying i'm realizing wait a minute I just like I just saw who Yonix is within like five scrolls because he has so much content right. and people don't understand the value of like as a business like why content is so important why people think I feel like <clears throat> I feel like a lot of people put way too much thought into the image and the image is just naturally what comes off of what you're supposed to be doing so you're just supposed to be doing it and then when they look they see an image like mm-hmm. if you're just trying to pose you're a poser you know like yep. In other sports and fields of life and shit, like, you either have to do it or you don't do it, you know? Like, if you were a skateboarder, like, you're either going to do the big-ass trick or you're not. Like, it, does, it doesn't matter how you dress. It doesn't matter how cool you are. You got all the fans. Like, if you can't do the trick, you suck. Period. And, like, also, like, I, I know a lot of graffiti artists, and it's like, they just, whatever it is, they going to make that tag, you know? Like, it's not like, oh, I need I need the special can with this cap. Like, nah, bro, you suck. You're fucking whack. Like, <laughs> you better hit it with the rock, bitch. That's so. fact. <laughs> I mean, that goes for, that's like, that's that's that, that goes to like, that's versatile to multiple things. That's you know? in every aspect of life. So, like, when, you, when you're too focused on trying to make it look good, you're not doing nothing. Yeah, you're not improving your craft. You're just so. being picky. So that's why I got crazy content because I just stopped caring about nothing. That's true. And that's where I, I feel like post. people don't understand the difference between a production and a document. Mm. Like that's what Gary Vee talked about, which I always emphasize <clears> that. <throat> what you do is you perfected the documentation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For me, I do production. Like I take, maybe I, I take a little more time to put it together, but yeah. like the whole purpose of it is just to have multiple angles, more, uh, well, like, 
uh, it's, it's pros and cons because there is time period where you're doing brainstorming. I'm the type of person where I just go in. I'll just flow around the spot yeah. because I showcase who I am, where I go, how I go. So we, we're doing it the right way, man. We're doing it the right way. That's for facts. Yeah, so like, yeah. oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just agreeing. That's facts, man. I see that purple soda is making me thirsty and shit. For you, I don't know. Ten dollars. You got the exotic Japan, snacks, man. and I didn't even know if that. If I popped it, it would really pop on you. I'm gonna tell you another story about the homie Yannick. Yannick comes through. You know what I'm saying? We we already know about our whereabouts. What we doing? I told you about the store, and then he comes and he introduces me to the exotic snacks. And this is why I fuck with you, bro. You brand shit subconsciously. You just brand shit without even trying. Like, that's how good you are, bro. You be branding shit without even fucking trying. And people, like how you said, they be thinking too much about the name, about how it sounds, the color, color schemes. Like, at the end of the day, if you could just come up with something and not put too much thought into it, and you make it vibe, people going to fuck with it and naturally. You, you could even change it. You can, because people are going to already <laughs> like, gravitate to it. You, you, could, you could start today, right, and in a week be like, bro, that shit was hella bunk, and change the whole game plan, but at least you started, and now you got a new game plan. Or you're just sitting there forever talking about, bro, you're so cool, how'd you do that? <laughs> it's just, it's authentic at the end of the day, like, look, well, back to the story, like, you came in, and he just brought, he's all like, first he showed me the, the tank shit backpacks, which by the way are fly as fuck, Thank champion you. manufactured this shit, looks fucking fire. You know what I'm saying? People don't know. Now you know. Put your and weed in there. You put your weed in there. Whatever you need, man. All your books, all that shit. Uh, for all you scholars, all you hustlers, we got mm. it all. Yeah, knowledge, power. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, you brought the sweaters too. I think you brought um, some of the accessories as well. But when he introduced me to the bag, he's like, hey, I got a bag for you right here. Let me pull out this bag. Pull out the bag. Wham! Pull out the wrap snacks. Pull out the fucking exotic I, chips. I got in this The shit. sodas. Hey. I got the, the micro trap, bro. Man, for people that don't know, so, exotic snacks ain't easy to find. Like Coach Beanie for sale. You got it all. See, yes, sir. I took the weed out. I got a little bit. You know, you need the weed. Everybody knows we're cannabis friendly over little, here, baby. I got a little bit more right there. This, this is the Bay Area, man. People too. smoke cannabis regularly. You know what I'm saying? For people that watch this outside of the Bay Area, outside of California in particular, weed is casual, man. People just smoke like on the fly. There's some people that, that come from out of state that work in my job. And they be like, dude, we, people smoke weed so casually. I'm like, that shit is regular, homie. Like, nobody really be tripping like that. Stickers on deck. Stickers on deck. Branding at its finest. You feel me? More so, so he came through with the exotic snacks. You know how to get my hands on the wrap snacks. I actually had to buy them myself because it was fire. And um, so, like, what made wrap snacks, I mean, not wrap snacks, what made exotic snacks stand out to you? Like, why you felt like it was necessary? Uh, this is this is when I have to admit I'm a culture vulture, <laughs> and I just like I just see what's cool and I be like, bro, like you know, like I'm like that evil white guy that just like peeked in the hood and like seeing all these <laughs> niggas rapping. It was like, bro, I need a piece of Tommy Hilfiger. Yeah, I'm Tommy. <laughs> you know, so like You're Tommy Hilfiger. I, I, I drink water <laughs> and fucking I like fruits and veggies and shit. Hell yeah, real it's food. Good for you, man. So encourage that shit. But I see the snacks is popping. I'm like, bro. I could get some snacks. I, I shit. I know everybody. I know where to get shit. So you know, and then yeah. So I just gotta run it, like nigga. Oh, y'all want some sodas? Come here. I know where to get some sodas. So, just some quick game. Well, he taught me this. Is that which one is this? Fanta. Yeah, this Fanta, and that's the peach coke. This peach coke. Yes, that's right. I said peach coke. Mm -hmm. And those you flip for like what ten? Yeah, I sell them for ten. And where did you say online they go for what? Like dub. They go for dub. Yeah. So fucking you, soda goes for dub. You could buy it off of me and make some money if you were smart. You smart. Go ahead and make that play. Like Gary V talks about, go to the garage and flip on Amazon eBay. You can go get a job for two weeks and quit. Get that check and I'll put you back on. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> soul. The game is sold, not told. Come on. Um, 408-780-TMTS. Call today. <laughs> you heard the man. So, I thought that was dope, you know, because, like, you've taken the time to figure out what's hot, but you branded it in a way where it makes it more appealing. Because mm -hmm. exotic snacks comes off and flows so naturally. And yeah. if you just take the time to, like, make a sign or something, like, in your shop or whatever, and you just have your own shit, they're going to remember it as exotic snacks no matter what. And that's why I'm saying you brand so naturally 